에스터쌤과 함께하는 Easy Once Reading The Fox Saw Eight Books 책 먹는 여우 우선 처음부터 끝까지 실감나게 유창하게 리딩을 해보도록 하겠습니다. Mr. Fox liked books. In fact, he liked books too much. When he finished reading a book, he sprinkled some salt and pepper on it and ate it. This way, Mr. Fox gobbled more knowledge and filled his stomach at the same time. However, he had such a huge appetite that he felt hungry, no matter how much he ate. Mr. Fox needed to eat at least three meals a day, but books were just too expensive. Mr. Fox was very poor, so he couldn't buy as many books as he wanted. He had already sold many things for money, which he used to buy more books. Now, Mr. Fox was left with only a table, an old bed, and a chair. The more books Mr. Fox put into his stomach, the more he wanted to eat. Mr. Fox was hungry day and night. He couldn't read well because he felt so weak. He had to read each line twice, straining his eyes. So he got tired after reading books. But who was Mr. Fox? He was famous for being clever. One day, Mr. Fox saw a building. There were lots of books on the shelves in this building. There were ten, no, a hundred, no, a thousand more books down at the bookstore around the corner. The delicious thunder paper came softly from the building. When he went inside the building, he couldn't believe his luck. In rooms as big as a gymnasium, row upon row of shelves, filled with the books were neatly set up. Hmm, yum yum, said Mr. Fox, smacking his lips. It was like a dream come true. To make things better, anybody could borrow books for free there. From that day on, Mr. Fox went to the library every day. To find out which books were most delicious, he secretly licked, sniffed, and tasted several pages from this book and that. Once he found a book that he liked, he slipped it into his bag and took it home with him. Mr. Fox went on his library visits regularly for quite a long time. As time went by, people started to notice something was wrong with the book in the library. More and more people started to complain that somebody had nibbled on the corners of the books. The librarian who took care of the books also noticed that many of them were soggy water saliva. What was worse, the books began to smell terrible with a wild animal smell, and some of the books were completely missing. All oh, this was really strange. So the librarian decided to find out what was causing the problem. For some reason, the librarian thought Mr. Fox was suspicious. And now that she thought about it, Mr. Fox hadn't returned a single book that he had borrowed. From that day on, the librarian decided to keep a close eye on Mr. Fox's behavior. Then one morning, the librarian was so surprised that she nearly lost her balance. Now just look at what Mr. Fox is doing. He first sniffs several geography books and puts them back on the shelves with a disgusted look on his face. Then he strolls to the Russian book corner where he picks out an especially beautiful book and fast as lightning takes out some salt and a pepper shaker and whistling happily 
he sprinkles the seedlings on the bed. Finally, with a delighted sigh and a moment's pause, he takes a big bite out of, he, out of the bird. Mr. Fox ate the whole book, including his cover and reading card. It was delicious breakfast. As Mr. Fox started to look over the other books, the librarian jumped out from her hiding place. How can you eat books? The librarian cried out in anger. Tax your teeth off our books right now. Wow, what a shock. Mr. Fox quickly swallowed the pages in his mouth and looked at the librarian with his big and big sad eyes. Mr. Fox look could, could have convinced anyone of his innocence. That is not how you use books, the librarian scolded Mr. Fox. From now on, you were banned from entering this library. Poor Mr. Fox trudged his way home with his, with his shoulders slouched. He knew that the good times were over. Poor Mr. Fox had nothing to read or to eat. He survived by eating leaflets and classified ad newspapers that were handed out for free on the street. In desperation, he even looked in the recycled paper box behind his house. After having eaten only this type of food for some time, Mr. Fox suffered from indigestion. In addition, his silky fur gradually lost its shine. Mr. Fox wanted to eat books so much that every night he had a dream. It was a dream about a book of more than 600 pages. But when he woke up in the morning, there were only a growling noise from his stomach. Mr. Fox found himself in a pitiful situation. Then finally, he thought of something bad. Till then, he had lived without causing trouble to anyone. Except for the incident at the library. Mr. Fox borrowed a woolen cap from Fat Granny. He pulled the cap down, wore his bag across his chest, and headed towards the bookstore around the corner. Once he arrived at the bookstore, he kicked the door open and shouted, Put your hands up! This is not a joke! Put some books in my bag right now! If you do anything foolish, I'll bite you on the bottom. The people in the store were all so frightened that they couldn't even move. The bookstore owner quickly filled the bag with books. As soon as the bag was full with a total of 24 thick books, Mr. Fox left the store. Phew, this is so heavy. Next time, I will borrow a handicard from the market, thought Mr. Fox as he went back home. Since it was his first robbery, it wasn't exactly perfect. As soon as he returned home, Mr. Fox started reading, turning the pages of the first book. Just when he was about to eat up the seventh book, the doorbell ring rang. You were under arrest, cried a policeman with a belly as big as the hippopotamus for stealing books. People in the bookstore had recognized Mr. Fox even though he wore fat granny's woolen cap. So, this is how it ends. Mr. Fox explained how things had been and apologized hundreds of thousands of times, but it was no use. 
A crime is a crime, grunted the policeman. Before arresting poor Mr. Fox and looking him up in prison. Now there was only bread and water for Mr. Fox and no books. Actually, no reading material at all was given to Mr. Fox. He received the punishment of being absolutely banned from reading. That is the cruel method used only in the Middle Ages, thought Mr. Fox. I can't live this way. For more than three and a half days, he was convinced. Life was too tough and painful for Mr. Fox. But then suddenly, he had an incredible idea. Mr. Fox persuaded Mr. Bright, the prison guard, to help him. He used all the nice words he ever had read in books. This way, he convinced Mr. Bright to get him some paper and pencils. Mr. Fox wrote on the paper day and night. He felt so inspired the words just flowed out of the pencil. The sheets of paper he wrote on gradually grew in number. After a while, they filled the whole cell so there was hardly any space for Mr. Fox to sleep. However, Mr. Fox didn't need to lie down because he didn't stop writing anyway. Two weeks later, the books was finally finished. It had a total of 923 pages. It's like a really thick can, said Mr. Fox, and his mouth was already watering. Mr. Bright was also very happy. He had spied at Mr. Fox's story when he went, went in to serve tea. And now curiosity was almost killing him. Mr. Bright was very helpful assistant to Mr. Fox, sharpening the pencils with a special care. So, as a gesture of gratitude, Mr. Fox showed his book to Mr. Bright, first right after it was finished. As Mr. Bright had been busy reading the book, he didn't even go to work for two whole days. After reading Mr. Fox's story, Mr. Bright realized one thing. That Fox is a great writer. Mr. Bright was so excited, he nearly tore and ate the paper. However, instead of doing that, he headed back to the prison. But he didn't go directly. He stopped off somewhere first. Mr. Fox grew anxious. Maybe he wouldn't be able to eat his book after all that work. His doubts grew. However, when Mr. Bright appeared holding the pile of paper, Mr. Fox began to jump up and down for joy. Mr. Fox was happy while he was eating his book. Smacking his lips, Mr. Bright started to tell him what he thought about the book. He told Mr. Fox how impressed he was with his elegant writing style, his witty ideas, and the unexpected ending. Meanwhile, Mr. Fox ate and listened and listened again and ate. Mr. Fox how about making a real book out of your novel? I mean, like one of those books that you can buy at bookstores. The prison guard said. At the word bookstore, Mr. Fox jumped with surprise. He even dropped a couple of pages he had in his mouth. But after hearing Mr. Price's idea, he soon calmed down. 
Well, said Mr. Fox, wiping his muzzle. Do as you wish. The place that Mr. Bright had stopped at on the way back to prison was a photocopy shop. He had made a copy of the whole book. How fortunate that was! If he hadn't, the book would have disappeared in Mr. Fox's stomach forever. And one can't read what's already been eaten. So it was all set, and everything that followed was just like a fairy tale. Mr. Bright quit his job as a prison guard, and opened a publishing house. The Fox Snowball became a bestseller, selling many many copies, and was translated into seventeen languages. In addition, the book was made into a movie. And shown in theaters, film was not exactly to Mr. Fox's taste, but the film business had its attractions. Thanks to his outstanding contribution to literature, Mr. Fox was released only from prison. He was released quietly without attracting anyone's attention, and people didn't ask any questions about his past. Mr. Fox is now very rich, and he can buy as many books as he wants. But he doesn't buy them; his own books taste the best. Mr. Fox is now the most famous writer in the world. Many journalists write articles about him, and many critics have reviewed his works. However. Nobody knows the reason why there is always a little bag of salt and pepper included with each novel by Mr. Fox. Hush! Don't tell anyone. That is a secret between you and me. 이렇게 전체를 음, 실감나게 유창하게 읽는 연습을 하고 또 뜻을 하나 하나. 알면서 연습을 할수 있는 영상을 또 만들어서 올리도록 하겠습니다.